कलिए सुंदराकार सदैक प्रिय दर्शन वाक्यानाशकम देव सत्गु मुरलीधर मुरली मंडितकमल मुनिजन मोहन व्यक्तस्तपाद वनमलाधारिण प्रेम भक्त मंडल निर्ति श्री प्रेम कवर्धम आश्रिए हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे हरे जय श्री राम राधे राधे पद विनायक ग्रेस ऑफ अवर गुरु जी हिस्स होलीनेस महारणम श्री श्री मुरलीधर स्वामी जी एंड द कॉजलेस मर्सी ऑफ अवर माधुरी सखी समेत श्री प्रेमिका वर्धन ठाकुर जी टुडे आई हैव द भाग्यम ऑन डूइंग हरि कथा ऑन वाहमन चरित्रम ओवर द कोर्स ऑफ टाइम भगवान हैज टेकन लॉट ऑफ फॉर्म्स and if you compare each form is significantly different from the other if a given a choice and if an actor has to act there are only certain sections of role that a actor is good at the one who is very good in positive shades is difficult for him to do negative one who is on a funny side of the character cannot do the serious side of the of the roles but when it is comes to bhagwan right there is no one avatar that we can say has any shade of the other avatarams you take any avatar you take narsimha avatar that ferociousness that we saw in narsimha avatar no avatar can show that you take krishna avatar the kind of vibhavam that uh, krishna showed us every padam padam he was showing displaying the divine qualities only krishna can do rama when it comes to dharma only rama can do and similarly we have vamana for vamana our mahans especially our andar calls is specifically as uttaman uttaman tera paadi he is called as uttaman for a very specific reason because if we look at the life or the uh, avataram of uh, vamana we see that it's always anugraham there is no nigraham somebody can come and argue That isn't that what Krishna avatar, Rama avatar was there? Was it when Kamsa was killed or when Shishupal was killed? Didn't they had a nigraham? Did didn't they always had nigraham? The answer is yes. But at the moment when they were about to die or something, they still had to go through a pain. But when it comes to Vamana, there is no pain. The parties on his side got what they wanted. The parties on the other side. got what they didn't even expected but yet they got it and the one who prayed to have vamana as an avatar of god what she was looking up so from every aspect every angle that we look at we see him that he has covered everybody only anugraham even in shrimad bhagavatam when describing all the avatarams of bhagwan even brahma calls him as uttaman why because brahma is the creator He is the creator of all the lokas that we reside in, but above Brahma, the actual creator, the actual manifester is Bhagwan Himself. He has actually created or empowered Brahma to even create this loka. Every single inch, every single thing that is happening is directly or indirectly happening to the gaze of Bhagwan Himself. There is no denying that, and yet even on that position that Bhagwan is located at, he still comes down. and is asking for a bhiksha see when dhruva did all his penance and everything there was no such thing called as dhruva loka what is called as north star it never existed bhagwan created out of the blue and gave it to dhruva now when the manifester when the creator himself can create a loka for others what was the need for him to actually come and beg for three pieces of land all he was asking was three pieces of land He could have extended the earth itself to create those three places if he really wanted to do so. But the greatness here lies is Bhagwan coming down from his position to a position and asking for it. There is a story of in the Purva Ashram of Papa Ramadas. He had a relative. She was very very affluent lady, very high social stature, had a very good and uh, amazing job. 
वन साइड ऊंच वर्ती केम टू अवर हाउस ऊंच वर्ती जाए द पीपल हु कम बैक इन योर हाउस टेक आर्म्स कुक फॉर द भगवान एंड ऑफर द पुण्य दैट कम्स फ्रॉम द फूड टू द भगवान हिमसेल्फ एंड नाउ दैट ऊंच वर्ती इज आस्किंग कमिंग टू देयर होम आस्किंग फॉर आर्म्स नाउ व्हेन ही वाज आस्किंग फॉर द आर्म्स दिस लेडी गॉट एक्सट्रीमली मैड मैड बिकॉज़ ऑफ अ रीजन शी सीज दैट दिस इज अ यंग चैप हेल्दी he could work for himself why go door to door and beg for something so she kept cursing on him and he challenged her you think if this is so easy for you to do why don't you do for one day get 1 rupee from your office and i'll come here tomorrow and tell me how was your experience confident that her lady was she took it as a challenge and she went to office her driver drove her to the office she got out of the car went into the building everybody in the floor was standing in india when a higher official comes specifically in government offices you will see people are standing and greeting them as she was entering the door and through the room to her office every single person is greeting her morning madam good morning madam good morning she is suddenly becoming conscious of her stature the whole day is passed and she is not able to ask anybody to come and give her one room now when a lady working in one single office has a problem asking for 1 rupee bhagwan coming down and asking for three pieces of land does make him as uttam now in shrimad bhagavatam 8th canto as sukadev goswami is explaining everything about all the manvantaras he suddenly comes across and stops at seventh manvantara and he is explaining how bhagwan came and asked for arms and our parikshit maharaj is confused he doesn't understand this question he said how why and where what made bhagwan really do this and to answer this bhagwan first starts with a back story so long back indra did an offense for that offense he did it for his against his guru his guru was brihaspati now for the offense that he committed slowly his downfall started the asura sense the weakness in the link and bali maharaj the king of the all asuras took this as an opportunity and started attacking the indra loka himself the swarga loka indra was brutally defeated completely destroyed he ran and ran his to his guru and asked what to do guru explains this exactly why it happened and he tells that we have to reach out to brahma let us talk to brahma and see what he has in offer for us they go to brahma and brahma says only bhagwan vishnu can save let us all together go to the shores of the milk ocean and pray for bhagwan vishnu so they enter into the milk ocean praying for bhagwan himself the bhagwan appears the effulgence of the bhagwan is so bright that brahma is able to see bhagwan but none of the devtas are able to see they are barely open to open their eyes they can't even see their body all they can hear is a voice bhagwan says ask for a truce do a cease fire with all the daityas and call for them to do something called as samudra mantan there is a mandara mountain bring that mountain keep it on the shore use vasuki as a snake and as a rope on one side you have devatas other side there are daityas you can each pull row at a time and let the churning begin and the nectar will come and i will see to it that all the uh, nectar is distributed to all the devatas so all the devas are happy they got what they were looking for they reach out to all the daityas led by bali maharaj they ask him to do a sandhi a cease fire they do a cease fire bali maharaj readily agrees so everything is set in motion now they go ahead and fetch mandara mountain mandara mountain is huge it's huge so as they are pulling it out and dragging it was so huge that it was slowly crushing even the devas as well as daityas bhagwan as his karuna murti comes on garuda he sits on the garuda he grabs the whole mandara put on garuda and drops it in milky ocean as this was going on bali maharaj was observing what all bhagwan is doing then they sat in and bring vasuki and they are slowly churning the ocean but now as they are churning the ocean the whole mountain is slowly slowly sinking in now as they are sinking it they again don't know what to do they look at bhagwan and bhagwan takes the kurma avatar he takes the atva avatar of a tortoise and take the whole weight of the mandara mountain on his back and it's easy to churn now they are trying to churn but they still feel a difficulty 
This is where Bhagwan takes, being the Ajita himself, he takes the front position of the stake and is himself pulling as a Asuri Shakti and the Devas for the uh, taking their Shakti, giving the empowering them. He is actually standing on both sides and slowly churning the Mandara mountain and the milky ocean itself. As time goes by, there are a lot of Uchishwara and all of them comes out, including our mother Lakshmi. And eventually, Dhanvantari comes. He comes with a pot of nectar, Amritam. The moment he comes out with a pot of Amritam, the Daityas snatch it and run away. This, and now they are going on the other side and they are fighting amongst them as to who has the first Adhikara to drink. Now they are, when they are fighting all by themselves, the De Devatas are all, all disheartened. They don't know what to do. Again they pray to Bhagwan. Bhagwan this time takes the avatar of Mohini. Very smartly he goes with them and looking at the avatar of itself, he bewilders all the daityas. They thrust Mohini avatar of itself, hand over the pot to her and ask that you are the, the most intelligent person around, you do the distribution. She warns them of what will happen. She says, I am not as smart. There could be mistakes. They say, no, no, no. Whatever you do is right. We agree by you. We stand by you. So she takes this as an opportunity and she talks sweetly with Daityas, but with Devatas, she is actually giving them Amrutam. As she is doing this, all the Devatas are getting their power slowly back. Now they are slowly regaining their upper hand. Like Vrittasura Charitra, Vrittasura was clearly observing and he knows that the Kala was with Indra. That if there is a fight to be fought, Indra will win. Whether he thinks he has the upper hand or lower. Why? Because he has been bestowed by Bhagwan himself. Same Bali Maharaj is observing. He is seeing everything that the Bhagwan is doing. He sees that Bhagwan is actually bending over his back to do everything that he could to help Devatas. He knows that no matter what, if there is a fight, if there is a war that is to be ensued now, they are going to be destroyed. Being a Kshatriya by Dharma, if there is a war, he has to fight it. Now Indra, everybody is super powered. Now they are superly charged, they are ready to fight, they are ready to go. They take all the weapons and they charge over Daityas. Daityas are now fighting, but now they are in a defensive position. They fight as best as they could. Lot of people die in the process. Eventually they are completely routed off by the Devatas. They are thrown out and left at the mercy of Kala. See, this is the amazing thing of Bhagwan. Bhagwan made this the perfect balance that you can think of. While he was giving Amrita to ensure that they have, all the Devatas have eternal life, almost eternal life, he has uh, Sukracharya on the other side who has the Vidya of Mrita Sanjeevani. So on one side, you can live forever and with Mrita Sanjeevani, you will never die. So now when these Asuras are almost on the dying cult, this Shukracharya comes into play and now he is doing Mrita Sanjeevani to all these Asuras. Slowly, one by one, one by one, he is bringing them back to life, back to life, back to life. Our Bali Maharaj also comes back to life. Now he owns everything to his Guru, Shukracharya. He takes the shelter of Shukracharya and he says, Guruji, tell me what should I do? What is the process that you want me to do? What should I do? Compassionate that our Sukracharya was understanding how everything is working, how the Bhagwan is playing the role and driving it, he says we have to take off the role of uh, Chandra of Bhagwan himself. So he recommends that he needs to do something called as Vishwajit Yagya. So Sukracharya leads the whole uh, 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 Vishwajit Yagya. And our Bali Maharaj is leading it. The Yajna is a process, the Vishwati Yajna is a process where you have to give everything, every single thing that you have as part of the Yajna and eventually whatever you are expecting from the Yajna will be bestowed upon you. In this case, it happens to be the Lordship or the ownership of Swargaloka itself. So now our Sukracharya is leading and as the process is going, eventually the Yageshwara, who happens to be Vishnu himself, gives or bestows Bali with lot of things. He gives him a golden chariot. It's blazing like fire. He gives, he equips him with a bow and an arrow with a quivers that will never go empty. The more he uses it, the more it will be filled. So it will never go empty. He gives him with a, a conch. 
so that he can use that shank to call people for a war and then he gives him all the commandment and everything the kavacham and all taking all these offerings that he got he goes to sukracharya and said tell me what i should do next sukracharya says wield everything it's time for you to attack swarga loka he wields everything and is ready to roll that time our prahlad maharaj comes being a grandfather of uh, bali maharaj he puts a garland and gives him a blessings he says go win over indra loka and come back taking the blessings from his grandfather our bali maharaj leads the whole fight and comes to the door of indra loka standing on the outskirts of indra loka he blows his conch when indra who is sitting inside hears the conch he is shattered hearing it's the conch he understood that now the tables have turned bali maharaj is now empowered and now he is on the offensive so he doesn't know what to do he looks around and looks around and find somehow find his guru brahaspati he takes his shelter and tell me what to do brahaspati says while you are enjoying all the riches and affluences of swarga loka our bali maharaj was working and trying his level best to see how he can win it back the kala has shifted he has a upper hand now you cannot do anything it's time for you to retreat go and hide somewhere you cannot win over bali he is totally empowered now so here in this news our indra leaves indra loka and without a single fight without a bow even shot our bali easily enters into in swarga loka and takes over indra loka after he wins over indra loka bali maharaj doesn't stop there he goes back to his guru and said that now that i have what i don't intend to enjoy the riches of indra loka i don't want swarga loka tell me and guide me what should i do next his guru says if now that you have one over indra loka if you want to go to the next level all you have to do is now do ashwamed yagam the punya phalam of ashwamed yagam is if you do 100 yagams you will get the adipati of swarga loka itself so now he starts ashwamed yagam now while all this is going on indra is being thrown out everything is going astray the mother of indra is extremely dejected she is extremely sad it and like it's all but natural our kids have been cast away they don't have a place to stay they used to have all this bhoga everybody used to look at to up to them and now he's suddenly running here and there here and there steady for his own life she was very sad and very dejected her husband was kashyap maharaj kashyap is a prajapati the whole prajotapati is done by kashyap is a grandson of our brahma now once he comes out of his meditation and he comes home he sees that everything doesn't seems to be normal at home he sees that you know the home is bit neglected so he is very very sorry to see the state of the house he calls over aditi and asks her is everything okay is everything happy here is everything going good are the brahmanas being treated correctly are there any asurik shaktis that are causing trouble here are the cows and everything doing fine and she is listening to all this question and eventually she says, she says everything is fine being a prajapati kashyap doesn't realize that the problem is at his home and everything is fine for him everything is same inside outside he doesn't differentiate between what is right and what is wrong for him all are at the same platform he is the father of both daityas as well as devas through aditi and aditi and diti so for him he, there is no differentiation but for aditi it's different right it's her own kids she is she sees that her kids are really having a lot of trouble they are not being happy so she see express everything to her kashyap maharaj tells him that everything is fine loka is fine cows are doing good all brahmanas are taken care of however the problem is with our kids while she is referring to our kids kashyap maharaj is saying what is the problem with your kids she explains all that has happened and kashyap maharaj understood what is the solution here so he tells her that i will teach you vratam payo vratam so this is the vratam that brahma himself taught prajapati to do for the procreation of the uh, uh, generation itself for people payo vratam so uh, kashyap definitely knows here he is telling the vratam which is going for 
Prajotapan. So for the procreation of the human, but in this case, now the avatar is going to come. So he teaches her that Vratam. It's a very strict Vratam that she has to follow where she has to get early in the morning. There is a lot of procedure that she needs to follow. She needs to do take care of all the sadhus, all the Brahmins, take care of cows and everything, offer everything to Bhagavan as Naivedyam. And the milk that is offered to Bhagavan is the only milk that she can drink. There is nothing else she can drink. As conveyed by her husband, she does this Vratam for the next 12 days, non-stop. And at the end of the 12th day, she has Sakshat Karam of the Bhagavan himself. Tears flows in her eyes. Because people are spending lifetime after lifetime after lifetime in search of Bhagwan and don't even get a scent of Bhagwan. And all she has done is 12 days of Vratam. Because her, for her, the Guru was Kashyapa. It's the greatest of the Guru himself that has brought Bhagwan to her. Now when the Bhagwan is appearing in front of her, he's studded with jewelry, yellow, vibrant, pitambaram, four hands, having Shankar Chakra and everything is standing in this uh, in her in, in her in the front of her with full effulgence her voice is choking tears are running out of her ears hands are st ears are standing on ends and she's really crying and she's offering her prayers to Bhagwan. she says yagyesha yagya purusha chuta tirtha pada Tita Shava Shavana Mangala Namadheya Apanda Loka Vijilo Pashamodaya Shamna Kridisa Bhagavan Asidina Natha. We all know that there is Bhagavata Mashtotra that our Guruji has created. 108 slokas are there. And when creating that 108 slokas, when Guruji wrote them, after the 18,000 slokas that we have in Srimad Bhagavatam, this prayer, this one sloka in Srimad Bhagavatam forms three slokas in 108, Ashtotram. As Ramana himself says, this is one of the favorite slokas of our Guruji. Here, our Aditi is offering prayers and saying to Bhagwan that you are the enjoyer as well as the bestower of the Yajna. The Yajna Havis that we do is done to you. Whatever is done to you, you again give us as your offering. As whatever you give, you give as a prasadam to us. Everything, all the tirthas, all the holy waters, everything that is there is all sitting at your lotus feet. People are chanting so that they can always have your namasmarana. All the rishis, all the munis that are doing tapas are doing for your sake to have your one darshana. And me just doing 12 days of Nama has led me to you. What else and what is there that I can say to thank you enough? Now Bhagavan is hearing all these prayers from Aditi. And she eventually says, even though I am doing all this with the, the mere thought that I should be praying to you to overcome something that is offending me feels very trivial. It's a similar prayer to that what Dhruva did. Dhruva, when Bhagavan came in front of him and Dhruva says to him, all my life I was searching for a broken glass mm. where the diamond is standing in front of me. Mm. So now, but Bhagavan understands exactly what she is praying for. To establish our uh, Indra back in Swaragaloka, he has to destroy the Asura Gula. And he says that, pinpointed it to Aditi saying that you want to make, to, you want to see that all the Asura Kula's wives are widowed, that the whole Asura Kula is destroyed. But I will tell you one thing, oh mother, I cannot do it. Why I cannot do it? Because they are protected by their Guru. As long as they have the bestowing blessings of their Guru on them, nothing void will happen. If a person, whether with good intention or bad intention, does a Yajna or a Tapasya, he will get the results. And that's the reason Hiranyakashipu got his results. He was never doing for Loka Shema or Loka Kalyano. He was still bestowed with all the things that he was asking for. But since you have prayed me, I will create a circumstance in which they will get the wrath of their Guruji 
and from there I will make sure that Indra will get his Indra Lokam back. Saying this, our Bhagwan disappears. As time rolls on, our Bhagwan descends slowly into the heart of Kashyapa Muni. Kashyapa Muni can see all auspicious signs around him. He can see that he is in a state of ecstasy. Everything positive that you can think of is happening all around him. He sees that you know it's about time that Bhagwan's avatar is going to come. Eventually, from Bhagwan's heart, uh, from Kashyapa Muni's heart, Bhagwan will transfer it to the womb of Aditi. As with Krishna Avataram, when Devaki started showing effulgence, when Krishna descended, same happened with Aditi. She was fully effulgent. All Devatas, Kinnaras, Chan, everybody was coming here to take darshan, to have and to do stuti on Bhagavan. Brahma himself comes and does stuti on her, on our Bhagavan himself. As the Shravana month comes on the Dwadasi day, and Bhagavan is so peculiar, he picks a nakshatram called as Abhijit. The peculiarity of this Abhijit nakshatram is anybody who is born in that nakshatram and all people around him will never go, anything bad will happen. It's only good, Mangalam. It doesn't matter what you are, where you are, where you stand with them, what is your relation with them, only auspiciousness will happen around them. Taking that particular Abhijit Nakshatram, our Bhagwan descends as Vaman Avataram. His name was Upendra, but because of his short in stature, he got a name Vamana which stick with him. Now Bhagwan when he comes in front of them as uh, uh, Vaman Avataram, Haditi and Kashyapa are anything but themselves. They are extremely happy and they see Bhagwan in his first 400 forms, the actual avatar, actual the way the Bhagwan sees Shankar Chakra, Gada, everything is there, Khaustuva Mala is there, Vanamali is there, and he is effulgently blessing. As they take his darshan and rose up, they see that Bhagwan has now converted into Vaman avatar. All people, all devatas, all Brahmas, everything are coming, lining themselves to have the darshan of Bhagwan. Gandharvas are showering flowers from the sky because now Bhagavan has taken an avataram here. Now Kashyapa take this as an opportunity and immediately does, does all the samskaras for Bhagavan. Now, now Bhagavan has, has been gone through his immediate samskaras and now the next acharam that they have to do is Upanayanam. So for Upanayam, Bhagavan gets lot of gifts from everyone. When he is sitting for Upanayam, Surya Bhagavan himself comes and does Gayatri Upadesham for him. Brahaspati will give and he will come and give the Poonal for Bhagavan. Our Prithvi Mata will give the deer skin which he will tie around his waist. The Brahma Danda of Bhagavan is given by Chandra himself. The Kamandalu is given by our uh, uh, Brahma and uh, Brahma, uh, Brahma Danda was given by Chandra. The Kusa grass on which Bhagwan is going to sit is given by Saptarishis. And the bowl in which he is going to ask for arms is given by Kuvera. And the first dana is given by our Parvati. Now when the whole ceremony is done, the first thing that Bhagwan does is he will do a yagya at his own place. After doing his yagya, performing his first sacrificial he will plan and leave and now it's time for him to do the avatara karya. So now he is going to start and start begging alms from everyone. So as he is walking on the banks of Narmada river, he sees that our uh, Bali Maharaj is doing his final 100th Ashwamedha Yagya. As he is walking towards the Yagya Shala, everybody is just watching Vamana Bhagwan. Nobody has seen anybody like him. The Brahmins who are sitting at the Yagyashala and Duvara are Havis, they are stopping there, they are just watching Bhagavan. The mantras who are being chanted are abruptly stopped there. Everybody is turning and saying, who is this effulgent boy? Who is this effulgent boy? Is he one of the four Kumaras that has come here, walking here? Is one of them him? Is he the Bhagavan himself? Has he taken some kind of form? Is he some kind of Brahma Rishi that is coming here, walking amongst us? 
and he was was wondering and as bhagwan comes near him our bali maharaj who is the dharmatma himself comes and takes shelter of bhagwan he says that i feel very very fortunate that you have come here in our yagya shala here and that to one auspicious day of the conclusion itself i am very happy o brahmana today i can give everything that you are ready to ask for me saying so he takes water and does his uh, washes his feet bhagwan is listening carefully and everything he says o brahmana please ask me whatever you want i am here i have given so many riches for so many people you looks about everybody else for you i am ready to give everything just ask for it what you want bhagwan is very smart here he doesn't say anything he is counting the counting the glorious ancestry of bali maharaj himself he says that your father virochana the great son of pralhad maharaj himself when devas came to his disguised as brahmana they asked for his ayu left over ayu virochana without a thought gave everything to him you are his son your grandfather is a pralhad maharaj for whom narsimha took an avatar he can see narsimha ever avatar everywhere hiranyakashipu who did so much parents and everything couldn't find bhagwan but easily pralhad maharaj can see him everywhere you are his grandson what to say about your great grandson everybody know how glorious was hiranyakashipu but in this context bhagwan puts him as his mahatma he is saying so much struggle did narsimha had to take even to kill your great grandfather that after he killed he felt that he has done a great uh... <clears throat> so after killing after killing uh, uh, hiranyakashipu bhagwan felt that he did indeed performed a great deed not even that even the brother of hiranyakashipu hiranaksha bhagwan had so much trouble even to kill hiranaksha such was the greatness of our your ancestry so i trust when you say that you are going to do what you are say you are going to do after hearing all these glories of that the bhagwan has put forth our bhagwan says i trust your word o bali maharaj that if you wish to really give that you will give all i ask is 3 paises of land bali is in the shock of his life he is used to give 100000 cows you know continents islands and now that he is adipati of three lokas even asked you will give indra loka to this vamana so he is kind of short he says why don't you think again i know you are young at age so i want you to think big come with something bigger think of some dwipa do you want a dwipa should i give you dwipa should i give you the riches of all the riches that i have collected do you want indra loka do you want any planet tell me you want me to at all get something for you i'll get it for you to this bali our ivama mara says the person who is not happy or satisfied with three pieces of land will never be happy even if you give him sapta deepa mm. there is no amount of riches that can fulfill him i all i am looking is for three pieces of land while they were conversing this going back and forth sukramchara is observing he is thinking how can anybody ask for three pieces of land doesn't even add up so there is something that is going that is something fishy and then he sees that he is about to lift his kamandalu his pot and he is going to pour water once he pours water it basically means that he has given what this vamana avatar is asking for so thinking that his shishya is being cheated he enters the kamandalu and blocks the water itself So our Bali Maharaj is lifting the pot, trying to get the water out. Nothing is coming out. He is wondering there is water inside the pot. Nothing coming out. He is thinking what is going on. Vamana Maharaj, Bhagwan says, "Let me help you." He takes a kusa grass, pinches it, pokes the eye of Sukracharya. Sukracharya comes out with agony. 
and he stops bari maharaj there and there he says stop stop what are you are doing don't trust this guy this is vishnu he is coming here in the and pretending as if he is a small boy boy very innocently talking but he is going to usurp everything that you have he asking for three pairs in one pair he will take everything that is here in second pair he is taking going to take everything that is above what are you going to do to him with the third pair there is nothing left for you to give as a third pair but our bari maharaj says no walk is walk i told i will give i will give there is no going back now if it means that i have to go to hell so be it i am the son of virochana grandson of prahlad maharaj all the ancestry that our bhagwan reminded him he starts reciting all of them but our shukracharya says i am warning you if you do everything if you proceed with what you are saying you will do i'll curse you that you are going to lose everything you will end up going in hell this vamana is going to take everything from you this is the moment that our vamana mahara bhagwan was waiting for he was looking for to take the grace of his guru from our sukra from our bali maharaj he has already taken notes from our uh, sukracharya so he says yes this is what i am going to do these three steps as has been noted here bali maharaj takes his pot pours water and says your three lands are your three paces are your take whenever you want to take the moment even the word comes out our bali maharaj stage starts growing 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 it takes a huge virat avataram people cannot even see where is the tip of the head now nothing no hands nothing it's it's whole brahmandam all people see is the avataram of uh, bhagwan himself this is a trivikram avataram in one pace he will take the entire land in the second pace he will lift his leg and take the leg goes up to brahma loka our brahma who is sitting is dhyana suddenly opens his eyes he sees five moon shining in front of him doesn't know understand what is happening looks down to only understand that these are the five toe nails of our uh, bhagwan himself he takes the kamandul takes this as an opportunity and starts doing teertha abhishek out to our bhagwan himself that same water flows today as river ganga that has been brought by our bhagirathi our jambavan who is very famous in ramayana whose daughter was married in uh, krishna avataram to krishna himself as jambavati take this opportunity he was very young that time and does three pradakshina about those legs of our bhagwan himself nobody wants to miss an opportunity here now bhagwan looks down at uh, bali he says one gone here one gone there where should the third go bali doesn't have an answer here he is just wondering what to do what to say bhagwan invokes our garuda maharaj so garuda comes arvar comes and he says bind him with varuna pas so he ties him up and says that now you said that you are a satya sankalpa that your ancestor is so great that you will do what you say you will do but i see that you are failing here our bali maharaj with full humility says that if i have to suffer in hell i have no problems if i have to lose everything here i have no problem if i have to be a servant of a servant i have no problem what i can not happen to have is i cannot be a not be a satya sankalpa if i have given my word i will stand by it he looks at bhagwan prays to him and says you know oh bhagwan i have given this earth to you all the above planetary system also has been taken by you the only thing that i have not done to is sharanagati i will beg you to take your third step and put it on my head and when bari maharaj says this our prahlad maharaj comes he is extremely happy jubilant to see his grandson in front of bhagwan with not a tinge of arrogance with full humility he is offering himself to bhagwan <laughs> bhagwan is extremely pleased and he says that oh bali maharaj i will accept this i will send you to sutala this is another lokam far away from indra loka which is more glorious than the indra loka itself you will reside there since you decided to do ashwamedha yagya you will be the next indra in the next manvantara you will become the indra you will go with your entire family and entrant stay in sutala loka i will personally come there stay there and i will be guarding you all the time and bhagwan this gives this avayam to our 
Bali Maharaj, the first person to join them was Pralada himself. Bhagwan places his leg on the uh, head of Bali Maharaj and sends him to uh, Sutala Loka. And along with all the Daityas, our Bali Maharaj departs to uh, Sutala Loka. After Bali Maharaj is gone, Bhagwan will reinstate back uh, our Indra for Swarga Loka, making every all the Devatas happy and fulfilling the promise that he gave to his mother Aditi. He promised Aditi that he will put uh, Indra to Swarga. He promised the Devatas that he will have them reinstated. And he put our Bali Maharaj as the next Indra. That's why he is Uttama. Mm. At the end of this Vamana Charitra, our uh, Sukadev Goswami says, as a falashruti of this avataram, that all the people that are listening, and wherever this is, a story is told, that place is Pavanam, they will all be blessed, and they will have a royal road to Vaikunda itself. With this, I will conclude my Harikatha. Radhe, Radhe, Radhe.